I'm getting ready for my first visit to a Chilean copper mine. I'm feeling a little nervous. Those world-famous images from autumn of the trapped miners in San Jose keep coming to mind. On the way to the Sauca copper mine, we pass a sign telling us how long it's been since the last accident. 229 accident-free days. Is that good or bad? I can't say the sign boosts my confidence. Production manager Victor Arandado is my guide in the mine. Okay, okay. The first few meters underground. It's an unusual feeling. I lose my sense of direction almost right away, and I'm already beginning to feel slightly claustrophobic. How must the 33 miners have felt spending two months trapped underground? Victor informs the shift foreman that we're coming. We're on our way to the workshops, he says into the walkie-talkie. Suddenly, it's light. This is where the machinery is repaired, Victor explains. I wonder if the workers ever think about the dangers. He says no. They're all used to the situation. This is the miners' world, says Victor. You can't compare the working conditions to any other job. The atmosphere is different to anything else. It's a separate world down here, but we're born to it, he tells me. I can't say I really know what he means by that, but on we go, further into the mine. Here we encounter a man working alone, drilling. The machine he's operating drills 20 meter long holes into the rock. I ask him if he feels safe down here. <laughs> of course, with his boss standing next to us, he's careful not to say anything wrong. He says he started working on this machine at the age of 15. To be honest, he says, at the beginning he was a bit anxious, but now he likes his job. This is the stuff it's all about. The rock here contains 4% copper. Victor wants to show me a portable protection cabin that his company has just bought. Since the accident in San Jose, Victor says, the National Safety Authority has been carrying out more frequent inspections. He shows me the equipment, water, oxygen, and enough food supplies for 48 hours. That doesn't seem like much. After all, the San Jose miners were trapped for 69 days. Victor tells me he's confident there's no way a similar kind of accident could happen here, although the causes of that accident are still being investigated. Once above ground again, it seems incredible that there's so much life and activity going on inside the mountain. There was an accident last week at the mine south of here, Victor says. Two miners got caught in a rock fall, but they were only slightly injured. If you do this kind of work, you have to know how to look after yourself. If you don't take care, you have to deal with the consequences. But how can a miner take responsibilities for his own safety if the mines themselves are not safe? There are many small mining operations in Chile, most of which had never been inspected until the accident at San Jose. So I'm going to have a look at one. I'm visiting Manuel Martinez and his mining experts. Manuel is actually a farmer. He grows avocados and cherries, but he hopes his mountain will soon provide him with a very different source of income. We go up to the highest point on his land. The rock here contains a lot of copper ore, the two men tell me. That accounts for its greenish color. Manuel takes me to a hole in the side of the mountain. 
It's the beginning of a small mine, but digging was stopped after the disaster in San Jose. Since the accident, Manuel tells me, the safety regulations have become very strict. They want all sorts of paperwork now. That's what's stopping us, and not just us, other companies are also having problems. Inside the mine, Manuel shows me how they blasted the tunnel. He even finds some leftover pieces of fuse. He started excavating about a year ago and had hoped to be nearing production by now. But he says he understands the need for the new regulations. We know it's the right way to go, he says. People will eventually be working here after all, and their lives must be protected. Manuel hopes he'll soon have all the necessary safety reports to allow him to start blasting again. I admire his entrepreneurial spirit, but I'm doubtful whether hand-blasting holes in mountainsides is really the way ahead for a modern mining industry. Two hours south of Santiago de Chile is El Teniente, the largest underground copper mine in the world. It's owned by the state-run company Codelco. Almost half of Chile's mining industry is owned by the state. At the control center, I meet the miners of the future sitting at their computers. Here, all it takes is the push of a button to do the job that puts miners elsewhere in serious danger. From his workstation, one man controls a vehicle that transports excavated rock out of the mine. I'm keen to see the machine at first hand. Miner Pablo Soto takes me to see it. The deeper we go, the noisier it gets down here. And then we reach the remote controlled machine. I have a funny feeling that it's somehow alive. Pablo feels the same. The first thing I thought, he tells me, was that this was some kind of monster. In a way, I still feel like that. I don't trust it, he says. And that's exactly what I tell every new worker here, that they should bear in mind that it's a monster. Before meeting the next monster machine, I have to be secured with chains. And I can appreciate why. I doubt anyone would survive falling into this stone crusher. Accidents are few and far between here, but when they do occur, they tend to be fatal. Outside the mine, I meet up with Pedro Villagra. He was born in this old miner settlement, which is now being restored as a tourist attraction. Pedro points himself out to me on a photo with his mother. The school is in the background. He says it was a good place to live. If you were good in school, you could become an engineer and work in the mine. And if you weren't so good at your studies, your dad would still get you a job in the mine. It was our destiny, Pedro says, to live here and work beneath this mountain. Those days are now a thing of the past. But Chile still relies on its rich mineral resources for its economic success. The miracle of San Jose has renewed the country's pride in its miners. And despite some difficult conditions, no miner I spoke to said he'd like to change his profession.